She doesn't like to admit it. She's a homebody. She's a family person. And I saw it once before when they won the uh, 2013 NCAA championship. She walked out. I'm going to get emotional. No, she <laughs> you're get emotional. She walked out and she found me. And she stared at me. And then she raised her hand. No question about it. The same thing happened in Brazil. She walked up. She zeroed in on me. She found it. And we knew. We talked. So uh, it was very emotional. Then, then everybody was all over her, you know. And, but, but we had this look. And I, I knew it. And she found me, and that was it. She was going to find me no matter where I was. And that was maybe only five seconds. It'll come as no surprise that the Olympic Games bring families together, but this summer in Tokyo, something extra special could happen. 56 years ago, Sandy Gilchrist represented Team Canada in swimming at the Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan. Fast forward to 2020, his daughter Kaylee has a chance to bring the Gilchrist name back to Tokyo at the Olympic level as Kaylee Gilchrist tries to make her second straight squad for Team USA. We only had a team of four men. So it was pretty much predetermined who was gonna go. Um, first person I told was my father. No question about that. The way we found out, Adam had individual meetings with us and I remember him just like looking and smiling and I was like, okay, well, that'd be really messed up if he said I'm not gonna make the team when he's smiling. And he starts it off as, you know, you're not gonna be an Olympian for, for surfing, but you are for water polo. So I went directly to my car. The first person I called was Allie and then called you and mom and we did a pretty special celebration. That night we went to dinner and then the, the announcement was the following day. What was your favorite general Tokyo memory? I think the um, opening ceremonies um, and, and the, the, the village, um, it was all so, so new. I was very impressed with the city, very impressed with the organization and somewhat overwhelmed. Like you said with Tokyo, the opening ceremony and everyone's dressed up in matching gear and all of a sudden it's a, you know, USA is time to go out there and everyone starts chanting USA, USA. And then you walk out and there's just so many lights, like it, it's just completely exhilarating feeling. And I think that was kind of the moment, you know, yeah, I was told I was an Olympian two months prior, but that was the first time I was like, oh wow, I'm, I'm an Olympian, this dream, this dream came true. And, it's kind of fortunate that we didn't have a game until four days later, so we could totally uh, immerse ourselves in that opening ceremony. I think in your sophomore year at USC, I saw the potential, and it confirmed it to me in your junior year that you were good enough to be an Olympian. How old were you, and how did you realize that I was a two-time Olympian? I guess the first memories were um, during the 2000 Sydney Games. I was eight years old, and so I kind of grasped what was happening, but I think I just noticed the excitement you had to watch the games, and we every night we're watching some event, and then specifically when swimming came on, how happy you were. And uh, then during that, those Olympics, you went to go buy uh, two video, three videotapes of the 1964 games, and I remember we put it, and we had no idea what was on those tapes. And w there was nothing of you swimming, but there was some SC teammates, I think, were swimming, and we got to see some of their, those races. So I think that's kind of when I started to understand what it meant, but for me, it was more like just bragging rights at school. It was like, yeah, my dad's a two-time Olympian. What's your dad? <laughs> <laughs> the work ethic, the goal, and your determination to, to, to reach those goals. And you've reached them and, and stayed humble. Um, I'm particularly proud of you, the way you treat your friends, the way that you're, you're willing to, 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 to do, uh, go from one end of the state to the other on the same day to satisfy two uh, obligations. Sometimes I think you're nuts to do it. I mean, I've seen you fly from Chicago to San Francisco in one day. Um, and we just, I'm sure your mother and I just shake our head, but I am particularly proud of you doing that. And I do think that your friends recognize you for that and, um, and they don't forget that. You're one of the people that installed the importance of treating those around you 
um, nicely and what matters with friendships and relationships. And I think that rubs off on Allie and I, you know, we don't stress over the little things because we're reminded of what's actually important and that comes from you.